The Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC, in assessing the business ecosystem in the country, came up with eight measurable reform indicators as a way of making sense of and dealing with a myriad of issues relating to doing business in the country. These reform areas include starting a business, getting credit, trading across borders, paying taxes, getting electricity, registering property, as well as entry and exit of people. We spoke with the leaders of four of the reform indicators. Mrs. Fumi Lama leads efforts in the Getting Credit Reform Index. What we found when we started was that a lot of the financial institutions, banks and other financial institutions, are loath to give out loans to small businesses especially because of the risk factor of non-performing loans. Um, also, the businesses themselves do not traditionally have the kind of um, collateral that the banks like, which is usually landed property. Um, and also the banks don't have information on the borrower. Um, credit history information is, um, was lacking. Um, so what the get, Getting Credit um, if Reform Indicator did was work with the institutions that are supposed to provide that kind of information and or data for the banking and financial industry to work with. Um, mainly what we succeeded in doing last year was to support them in enacting two crucial pieces of legislation that will give le legal backing and legal framework to operations that were already in existence but, but were not being used the way they should have because of this lack of legal framework. Um, specifically the Secure Transactions in Movable Assets Act 2017 and the Credit Reporting Act 2017. Now the former, the Secure Transaction Act, what that did was to give legal framework to the National Collateral Registry, which is a web-based online registry operating under the aegis of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now this registry, what happens is that financial institutions, basically lenders, register their interest on the collateral that businesses, especially small and medium businesses, use as collateral for loans. And these collateral are movable assets, things that, such as motor vehicles, machinery and equipment, accounts receivable, inventory and stock, and even farm produce. Farmers can use their farm produce as collateral on this registry. And so banks and financial institutions and the definition in the Act of what is a financial institution is quite extensive. Um, they register their interest on the registry of these movable assets. So what that means is that now small businesses can use all types of movable assets. Even, like I said, accounts receivable, your distributor, supplier, your school, and you're expecting you know, revenue to come in at a certain time. That can be used as collateral on this registry. Um, the other um, act that we, um, we passed, we, got, um, we worked with the National Assembly to pass, was the Credit Reporting Act, which also gave legal backing to the operations of the three credit bureaus that are licensed to operate in Nigeria. And what that means is that where there used to be a dearth um, of information, of credit history of potential borrowers, there's now a legal backing on how that um, works, how that operates in Nigeria in terms of the kind of information they the kind of information they, they collect, how they collect it, the use of it, the rights and responsibilities of the credit information provider, user, and the borrowers themselves. Borrowers have the right now with this act to access their credit history. They can actually get um, a free report from each of the three credit bureaus once a year and to see what it, the credit information has been used on them. Banks are, 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 are obligated to use um, credit reports from at least two of the credit bureaus when making their credit decisions. Mm -hmm. So basically that, what that means is that the kind of risk premiums that 
hitherto are charged on um, the cost of loans. We expect that over time we will see those premiums reduced. For the importers and exporters in Nigeria, the complex array of challenges relating to cross-border trade were endless. But the PEBEC reform leader in charge of trade across borders, Jude Obo, tells me it's a new day. Since the inauguration of PEBEC, specifically uh, two years ago, and over the past 12 months, there's been a lot of changes in some of the processes which we have embarked in simplifying our trade or cause or our transactions or processes that happen in the port actually happen. So if I will give some very specific examples, uh, 24 hours of port operations. Before the emergence of Pebec, every cargo that comes into the country would have to wait for it to be uh, disembarked the following day if it arrives beyond a specific time frame, which is like 6 p.m. So you had a situation whereby the ports were operating between the hours of 8 to 6 in the evening. But today, one of the simplest processes which you've been able to put in place is a 24-hour port operations, which guarantees that all consignments coming into the port can be cleared out of the port any time of the day, 24-7. Okay, all vessels coming into the country you no longer have to wait and have sit idly and not and be incurring demerit to both the importer, the vessel owners, and even the government. But there's quick turnaround of vessel because immediately they come, they can leave. Other than that, uh, there was the issue of palletization. If you recall, last year the government made a giant stride in trying to simplify and standardize the way cargoes are imported into the country. Before September last year, all cargoes coming into the country did not have a standard of being loaded. The containers were just loaded up hazardly. And this was a major risk, causes a major risk to importers, to users of the ports. Even at the warehouses where containers at the point of offloading, you'll find injuries, accidents happening because of the way the containers are loaded. So the government, through PEBEC, pushed and worked with the Federal Ministry of Finance, Customs, Shippers Council, to promulgate, if I might use that word, the palletization policy, which basically speaks to giving standards to the way cargoes that are brought into the country should be loaded in containers. Now, the overall objective is to ensure a swifter and faster, simpler ways of uh, performing examination at the port, but at the same time, guaranteeing security and safety for the lives of people who are involved, both at the port and at the warehouse in offloading these containers. Another thing that will quickly come to mind, and this is a very big one, is the creation of a joint single examination at the port of cargoes. Before last year, as an importer and the broke and clearing agency, one of the biggest challenges that all the trade players in the port had was the number of examination that had to be done, performed on a cargo during the clearing stage. You had multiple agencies requesting for cargo, the same container to be placed, and multiple examinations happening. But with PEBEC, we've been able to address this issue by creating and mandating a single joint examination cargo, which is a system whereby all agencies work together through the leadership of the Nigerian Customs Service, who coordinates and leads the examination in conjunction with all the agencies. So all you need to do as an importer or your clearing agency is to just walk up to the customs office at any of the ports that they are clearing through. Once duty is paid, your cargo is assigned a, clear, a custom officer to manage the total clearing process. And that custom officer coordinates the examination of that cargo amongst all the other agencies, and you have just one single examination that is done. In all of this, 
this specific joint examination, the overall intent is to reduce the cost and the time it takes for importers or clearing agencies to actually perform uh, the examination process at the port.